Uh, all right, folks. Tempest Fugit. Let's uh, all sit down so we can get this started, please. Let the record show that the first uh, meeting of the St. Cyril's Parish Council, formed by our new pastor, Father Foster, to realize Vatican II's vision of a people's church by having the clergy and laity share the total responsibility of all the affairs of the parish. The meeting was called to order at... Uh, 822. Uh, 8.22, precisely. Uh, present were Reverend Father Foster, Sister St. Martin de Porres, the new principal of the grade school, Mr. Basil... Excuse me. Mrs. Ethel Cambridge, our charming secretary, Mr. Basil Bono, Mr. George Sanchez, and your chairman, of course, City Councilman Thomas Hess. Well, now, the floor is open for the first order of business. Mr. Hess. Sister. As you all know, St. Cyril's Parish was formed to serve the upper middle class white community. And now, 75% of the community is black. Most of our old parishioners have moved to the suburbs and only come back to meet old friends in the parish hall for an occasional bazaar or bridge game. There are problems, sister. Most of my friends feel they can't even let their daughters walk to mass alone. I know. Our parishioners come in on Sunday to check the church out to see if the community has damaged it. The rest of the week, it's empty. And at the rate the white children are leaving our school, it will be empty soon. So that the church can really serve the needs of the people of this community. I move that we direct the resources of St. Cyril's to the establishment of a vitally needed training center for the disadvantaged. Second. Great. Well, <laughs> you certainly started things off with a bang, sister. The floor is open for uh, discussion. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bono. May I ask a question, please? Please do. Sister, by disadvantaged, I assume you mean the colored. Yes. But won't they feel out of place here? After all, most of them aren't even Catholic. But they are members of our community, Mrs. Cambridge. They're our neighbors who desperately need our help to survive and to live with dignity. I think the whole thing sounds like a marvelous idea. What is your plan specifically, sister? To open our school and parish hall for full use, day and night. For what purpose, though, sister? to help children who are slow learners, adults who've never had a chance to learn. But who's going to handle all this work? Where does the money come from? We have highly qualified volunteers. Why, we can teach courses on black history and culture, on economics, uh, how to acquire green power by financing and acquiring businesses. Businesses? Uh, well, what kind of businesses? Well, whatever they decide, Mr. Bono. Well, of course, there'll be courses on the technique of organization and leadership. Well, now, I'm sure we wouldn't want to teach courses in organizing and leading better riots, would we, Father? <laughs> no offense meant, Sister. Oh, for heaven's sakes, of course not. None of us here thinks of Sister as colored. I do. If there had been organized leaders in the black community four years ago, you would not have had riots, Mr. Hess. They would have known that there are far more effective ways of getting what they need. Mr. Hess, the program we propose can help to do away with the injustice, the destitution, despair, and human degradation that are the causes of riots. Well, I'm, I'm sure that we all want to help, Father, and Sister is very persuasive, but all this sounds so... Of course, you know, we've never tried anything on this scale, even with our own people. That's true. The need is great. I think perhaps if Are we... we quite sure St. Cyril's is ready for a project of this magnitude? Our old pastor handled the spiritual side of the parish and let us handle the rest. That's the way Father Riley did it. But I am not just an attendant at a sacramental filling station. Well, now, I didn't mean that, Father, of but course. Father, Father, don't we have welfare agencies and the police to handle these problems? They deal with effects. We want to wipe out the causes. You know, Christ lived out in the nitty-gritty of the world, among the thieves and prostitutes and degenerates and the dirt-poor people where he was needed. And the Pharisees told him that there were welfare agencies and police to handle the problem. Mm, yes, well, of course, it might prevent trouble. You're sure you could handle it with volunteers? I'm sure. 
everyone is doing something for them. I think we should, too. Of course, there's been talk of wanting a, an inexperienced black man on the city council. If we open this center for them, they're, they're bound to see that we whites have their interests at heart, and heaven knows nobody could possibly have their interests at heart better than uh, a man who knows politics like me. You know, I think that perhaps Sister has given us a Christian opportunity to do some real good in the community. I move we go ahead with the project. And I propose we name it the Martin Luther King Center for Black Leadership. Fine. Excellent. And I'm sure we all give our unanimous and enthusiastic endorsement to Sister's proposal. Yes. So be it. Congratulations, everyone. Now we're moving. I suppose that Sister will head up the center. Uh, no. We'd like to get the man the black community respects most, if we can get him to accept. And who's that, sister? Jomo Imbutu. Who? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I don't think that's very funny. I don't think Sister St. Martin meant it humorously. Well, you, you can't be serious about letting a, a, a person like that use our church. Use it? Well, he'll burn it down, and us in it. Yomo Mbutu, the black militant? Insight. Stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. Insight. Most of us claim to be members of some church or synagogue. What is the church? A building where people gather to worship God? A religious bureaucracy? Or basically a community of people who share the same beliefs and values? So what is the purpose of the church? To acquire money and influence and power? Or to serve God by serving people? If it's service, what kind? Certainly the mission of the church is primarily spiritual. But does it stop there? Must the church not also concern itself with man's physical and psychological well-being? And whom does the church serve? Just its own members, like an exclusive club? Or all men, especially those most in need? What is the role of the church in human history? What are we, who are members of the church, supposed to be doing? to see Father Foster. So he sent you? Yes. Trojan horse. I don't think I've gained that much weight, Woody. It's not Woody Stokes. It's Jomo Mbutu. That's quite a name. And Sister St. Martin de Porres, that's quite a name for Henrietta Jones. But I guess it comes in handy doing Whitey's dirty work. What in heaven's name is dirty about the church wanting to help our people? The only help we want from the white man's church is reparations. Isn't the offer of help a form of reparation? Dollars and cents, cash and carry, hmm? And we've had enough of all other kind of help from the white elite establishment. Why refuse help from any source? Because the hunkies help cripples us. Whitey only pretends that we're sharing in our destiny when all the time he's the one that's holding on tight to the reins, the purse strings, making all the decisions, hmm? The same old colonial paternalism to keep the natives quiet. Now you go back and tell your great white father Foster that the natives are restless tonight, tomorrow, and from now on until we get control of our own thing, hmm? hmm? Now what do you think of that? Well, if you'll take that pencil out from under my nose, I'll tell you. Oh, 
Right now, the black man doesn't have enough leaders to take care of the institutions we've got or to develop new ones. Now, that's why we need the white man's help, to train the leaders for our own economical, social, and cultural organization. Mm -hmm. And your mama in a veil. Well, do you mind telling me exactly what that costume you're wearing represents? You sure are an ignorant nigger woman. <laughs> well, you sure are a mixed up nigger man. Do you think wearing that dashiki really makes you an African? In order for the blacks to have respect for their race, they gotta have pride in their heritage. Well, African nationalism's not going to do it. Mm. We American blacks are more than oceans apart from black Africans. We are 350 years of history away from them and light years in belief. Background, customs, costumes, social structure, language, education, you name it. Pox Fobiscum, baby. As much as I hate to confuse and outrage you with facts, Jomo, we blacks have infinitely more in common with the whites than with any African native. Now, I want to know something from you. Do you really want black power? Do you really want black pride? Because if you do, the quickest way to get it is to work with white men like Father Foster. White and black can't exist together. They never have. Wrong. All right. Give me one example. Right now. Consider the zebra? Well, I ain't gonna be no house nigga for you. Telling you all those little black lies you wanna hear. I just wanna hear it the way it is. And I hope you haven't got any ideas about converting me or my people, whatever we are or aren't. I don't, so why don't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? Comfortable? In a white man's house? Why are you so uptight? Because of white do-gooder liberals like you. Did you know it's easier to do business with an honest bigot? Hmm? Somehow or another, you always seem to know where you stand with a bigot. I'm offering you a partnership, and all you do is beat your gums and wring your hands. Now, how about it? Who decides what's taught? You and your people. You'll be a member of the parish council, and we'll work with you in any way you decide. And when we no longer need your help, when there's a foot planted in my rear to kick me out, I'll know I've succeeded. Is it a deal? We'll give it a try. Good. I said we'd give it a try. I didn't say we'd be buddies. Well, it certainly is not what I had hoped for. What is that? Where is that coming from? The church? The church? They're practicing for Sunday Mass. They're gonna play that at Mass? What better than soul music, baby? <laughs> you know, they're having as much effect on us as we are on them. It's great for both of us. Have you seen the buttons they're wearing? Black is beautiful. It gives them pride. I think it's a very good idea. They may have something to be proud about, we don't. That's why we've called this meeting of the council. Oh? I don't see our black council members here. That's so we can speak freely. What's the problem? That's plural, Father. Problems. Lots of them. To begin with, where are the good Catholic teachers we used to have in this school? Right now, Father, I am certainly not a prejudiced man. But it seems to me that our school is overrun with Jewish and Protestant teachers. And that's not what we had in mind when we built that school. No, it's like... I treason. They're volunteers, and they can teach math and public speaking and history just as well as anyone else. But that's not what's really bothering you, is it? I've never really known any Negroes before. Not really close up, that is. But now, they're everywhere. Like a plague of black locusts. Oh, I didn't mean that at all, Mr. Bono. They are very earnest, and they're really quite friendly. It's just that, that Mr. Yomo Mbutu, I asked him to speak for the women's club, and he carried on something awful. 
He called us all a bunch of guilt-ridden white racists. Well, well, diplomacy is not his strong point. Well, I know that some of the women are not coming back. In fact, some of them are not even speaking to me. Well, you shouldn't be concerned about that. If people behave that way, they shouldn't be a great loss to you. Well, this whole thing has been a great loss to me, I can tell you. Do you know I've lost 75% of my business since they opened their own co-op supermarket? And now there's talk of running this Yomo Ombutu for city council against Mr. Hess. They don't work. They hang around my gas station all the time. They frighten my customers. But the important thing, Father, is what is happening to our church. The desecration, that must stop. You all gave your unanimous and enthusiastic endorsement to this program. Now that it's and beginning... now we want to remove that endorsement. Well, you can't mean that. Father, you just don't understand what these people are like. I guarantee you it'll only be a matter of time before they demand a black replacement for you. I pray it happens as soon as possible. What? Well, it won't happen as long as we have anything to say about it. And we do. Shall we vote? All right, not without the full council. Father, even with you and the two Negroes, it'll still be four to three. Nonetheless, we owe them the courtesy, at least, of inviting them to their own funeral. This co-op supermarket zooming. Just what does it take to make you happy, huh? I mean, the Afro-style clothing factory's about to open, and look at this last report on the co-op gas station. Sales have zoomed from 20,000 gallons to 55,000 gallons a month. I mean, like things are groovy, baby. <laughs> so when do you start smiling, huh? In the year after. When blacks are angels and hunkies are flunkies. Look, we are making headway on open housing. The voter registration's going up. They want you to be their next councilman. So what I'm is... turning it down. And all of this won't last. What is it, Woody? It's Joe Mo and Butu. Is it something personal? Pig's power's too much for us. When they start to use it, we'll go down the drain. And you, too. <laughs> Father Foster has delivered everything he promised. Now, this kind of suspicion is just plain childish. You two had better come with me. There's a meeting of the parish council. We have trouble. Here comes the pig power. Did you ever notice how his sermons make all the prophets sound like socialists? Or worse. But he is a priest. He has to talk like that. Uh, you're not going to ask him to ban the Bible, are you? Now, don't try to be cute, Sanchez. You're in trouble, too, you know. Look, I've always treated the Negro fairly. Great. You're fair. They're not. All they're interested in is the color of your skin. And don't forget, since they started that black gas station, it won't be long before you and your gas station are right out of business. Don't forget who your best friends are and your best customers. And, Mrs. Cambridge, don't you forget, if these blacks spread much further, it won't be long before you won't be able to live in that nice big house your late husband left you. I don't think I would mind them as neighbors. Well, you might not, but a lot of white people would, and you'd never be able to sell for a decent price. Who of your friends will ever visit you if they have to try to hack their way through that ghetto jungle? You've got to think of the future. You've got to protect yourself. We all know why we're here, so let's get on with it. The floor is open to any motions. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Bono. I move that the Martin Luther King Center for Black Leadership at St. Cyril's be terminated forthwith. Do I hear a second? I second. A motion has been made and seconded that the Martin Luther King Center for Black Leadership be uh, terminated. St. Cyril's. <laughs> All those in favor, sick. <laughs> May I ask what you think is so funny? <coughs> you, Mr. Charlie. 
And all you Johnny come lately sitting here in judgment on me. What do you mean by Johnny come lately? Just what I said. You know, black people been in this country for 350 years, while your ancestors, I dare say, were still serfs in Europe, bowing and scraping and kissing their master's feet. <laughs> All except maybe my brown brother Sanchez here. Now, if you got any Mexican Indian blood in you, then your people been here since the year one. Which makes it even funnier that you at Chicano would be sitting in the same room with the same Anglos that raped you and your land. Brother, you are a real Uncle Tomas. You rotten hypocrites. Will you let me tell you just a little of what it's like to be black in this country? My five-year-old son, Matthew, now he learned to read from American books all about little blonde, blue-eyed boys and girls. All white. Same with the movies, television, newspapers, magazines. Now black is the night that Matthew fears banished by the clear white light of day. White is the hero on the horse that makes all the black stains vanish. Black is bad, sin, evil. White is goodness and purity. How oh, How am I supposed to make him believe that black is beautiful? Yesterday, his mother put him in a all black nursery. And when I came home last night, he was sick and confused, crying. I asked him what was wrong. He said, uh, why did you make me go to school with all those black boys and girls? I said, Matthew, you, you're black too. He said, but daddy, you, you said I could be anything I wanted to be. And I want to be white. Joe, oh, please wait for your sons. Oh. Don't go, please. What happens here today will determine what happens to your son Matthew tomorrow. Do you understand? You can't run away. You've got to come back here and face it. For your son's sake, for us. Proceed with the business at hand. Mr. Chairman, I call the previous question. All in favor of terminating the Center for Black Leadership, signify by raising your right hand. Sanchez? I am abstaining. You can't abstain. I do not have to vote, and I do not want to. Isn't that right, sister? No, Mr. Sanchez, that is not right. There comes a time when it's necessary to get off the fence, to stand up and be counted. For he who is not with me is against me. But, but uh, how do I know for certain what is the right thing to do? Someday, I'll have to answer for the way I lived out my priesthood and serve my people. I'll have to answer not only for myself, but for my parishioners. I hope and pray that Christ will look at me, at all of us, and smile and say, come, you blessed of my father, for I was black 
And you open your heart to me. Don't you see? Today, Christ is poor. He lives in a ghetto. And very often, his face is black. It can be brown or red or yellow or even white. The face of need knows no one color. The face of love is reflected in the rainbow glory of God. All colors for all men. And will you turn away from Christ? Because today, here and now, his face is black. I would like to cast my vote against the motion. And I would like to change. That makes it five to two against the vote. And we have voted to continue the work of this council. This isn't the end. I'm taking it to the bishop. You'll find that the bishop is 100% behind us. Then I'll resign from the council. So will I. We'll withdraw our support from the church. I don't think we've ever really been members of this church. We thought it was our own private club. And we supported ourselves instead of the church. If necessary, I'll leave the church. Oh, Mr. Hess, you haven't been a real Catholic for a long time. You dumb spick. I go to church every Sunday. Mr. World goes to church. He never misses a Sunday. Mr. World went to hell for what he did on Monday. of this committee seems to have suddenly changed. I move that the two white vacancies be filled by Jomo and Butu's nominees. You realize that makes it four blacks to three whites. Gives us control. Now you can plant that foot in my rear. Anytime you want. No kick coming. Consider the zebra. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church. <laughs>